How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the channel. I'm David Clark, this is My Old Sled, and this is the channel where we talk about all things snowmobiles and motorsports. So if you're looking for videos just like this one, make sure you take a second, subscribe to the channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll get notified whenever I post a new video. Now, whether you own a sled or an ATV or even a lawn tractor, this is a great video for you because I'm going to be talking about batteries. Specifically, I'm going to talk about lead acid batteries. I'm going to talk about how they work, um, what makes them not work, the kind of things that you need to do to make sure that when the season starts, so will your sled. I'm going to do all that after the intro, so stick around. Now, just before I get started, I'm going to quickly answer a couple of viewer questions. The first one was from Arctic Jeff, uh, and he had watched my last video on ATVs with tracks, and he's asking me how I would compare a snowmobile to an ATV with tracks just in terms of fun factor. I mean, with an ATV with tracks on it, you can go anywhere, and I guess that can kind of be fun in and of itself. It's something you can use year round. Um, but it's not the same animal at all as a snowmobile. So a snowmobile in the snow is going to be faster. You're not going to be able to carve powder in the snow or side hill or things like that. So for pure fun in the snow, hands down, I'd give it to a snowmobile every time. One of my subscribers, Mark Bow, he just bought himself a new sled and he's a little frustrated we don't have any snow and he's asking me if I can demonstrate the snow dance for you guys. Mark, no. The snow dance is far too suggestive. The hip action alone is going to get me banned from YouTube. So there are a couple of things you can do to make it snow. You can put a spoon under your pillow. You can wear your pajamas inside out and backwards. Kids, I don't recommend this one, but you can drop one ice cube in the toilet for every inch of snow you want. This is on the internet, so it's going to be true. So these are all ways you can, uh, can make it snow. If you guys have any tips or tricks or how you make it snow, post something in the comments below. Uh, so Mark, thank you for the question, and let's get to today's video. This particular snowmobile doesn't have a battery at all. It relies on its magneto to generate all the electricity it needs for its lights and its ignition. Now this sled also has a magneto that's generating electricity when it's running, but it also has a battery. The main reason for that is that it's got electric start. But if you, if you think about all of the things in the newer sleds in terms of electronics and electronic fuel injection and fuel pumps and starters and lights and all of those things, these sleds really need its steady 12 volts to run properly. Um, and on some machines, the magneto alone doesn't cut it. So having a, a battery in good condition is really, really important. Now, likewise, this Honda Rancher has a battery and a magneto in it. Now, what I found with this machine was when the battery needed to be replaced, even though I could get the machine started, it wouldn't shift properly because the transmission in this has electronic shifting. So if your sled has a battery, it's probably pretty important that it's in good condition and it's fully charged. So I think if you want to understand, you know, the things that can go wrong with a battery, it's important to understand how they work in the first place. So let's start there. All right, the battery in your sled is a lead acid battery, kind of like this old marine starting battery I have kicking around. Now, the first thing you're going to notice is they're really heavy. Now, the reason they're heavy is that they're full of lead. So the way this battery creates electricity is through a chemical reaction. So there's six cells in the battery. Each cell has a lead plate and a lead oxide plate, and they sit in sulfuric acid. Now what they want to do, they want to react with that acid to create lead sulfate. If you remember from uh, high school chemistry, when they react, they give up electrons. So the lead plate wants to give up an electron to the lead oxide plate. Each cell is connected to the one beside it, and the electrons will flow through the battery and then through the circuit in your sled. Now what makes these batteries work really well is that that reaction is reversible. So when we put current back into the battery from your magneto or from your battery charger, you reverse that chemical reaction or you recharge the battery. So now you understand how this battery creates electricity and what's going on inside of it. It gives you a better understanding of some of the things that can go wrong. So this is an old marine starting battery that I had sitting in my shed for ages and it's, it's pretty much done. So we'll talk about some of the things that are wrong with it. Now the first thing that can happen with a lead acid battery is something called sulfation. So remember we said that the lead and lead oxide want to react with that acid and create lead sulfate. So if I just let this battery sit, that process will complete and the battery ends up being sulfated. So basically the plates inside it are now coated with lead sulfate. And a lot of the newer chargers will have a desulfation setting. So if it's not too bad, you'll run that cycle through and when it's done, then you can charge the battery. 
Now, the other thing that'll kill your expensive lead acid battery is freezing. Okay, so you need to remember that the more discharged the battery is, the more likely it is to freeze. A fully charged battery probably won't freeze. I mean, technically it can, but it's like minus 70. So in a practical sense, a fully charged battery is not going to freeze. Uh, what happens when a battery freezes, it will actually physically damage the battery. And if you look close at this one, you'll see it's actually starting to bulge in places. So that's the other reason I've told you this battery is done. This golf cart's an old EasyGo Marathon. It's an electric golf cart, so it's got a number of batteries under the seat wired in series. Uh, now, a couple of years back, those batteries were done. They weren't holding a charge. I knew I had to replace them, so I stopped charging them. Now, they got discharged through the winter, and they froze. So, in the spring when I came out here, I realized there was two or three, three of these that were actually split open. That's not a good thing, even with old batteries, because now the acid's leaked out. Um, but if th these had been new batteries, you know, that's like a $1,000 worth of batteries I would have had to replace because I let them discharge and freeze. Another problem with a battery that's been sitting and discharged for a period of time is something called acid stratification. And that's when all of the chemicals in that electrolyte settle out and concentrate near the bottom of the battery. And finally, the probably the simplest problem that you can have with lead acid battery is corrosion and dirt building up on the terminals and connectors. All right, so now you know how batteries work and what makes them stop working. Let's talk about some maintenance tips to make sure they keep working. Now, I'm just going to keep using this big battery as an example. Um, and let's start with those terminals. So that's the first maintenance tip I have for you, is make sure that the terminals and connections are clean. Now, if it was for a car battery or this style of terminal, which your sled probably doesn't have, um, you can buy these little battery brushes at auto parts stores. So on one side, you've got a terminal cleaner. So you can put that down and turn it and clean the terminal and clean all the corrosion off and it ends up nice and shiny. But the other thing it does have that you might be able to use on your sled is this other wire brush that you can just take and use to clean. So these are pretty handy to have um, for any type of battery you might have. All right, guys, now if you think of all those things we talked about in terms of sulfation and freezing, number one maintenance tip for your snowmobile battery, don't let it discharge. So kind of at the beginning and middle and end of the storage season, throw the charger on it, make sure the charge is topped up. There's a lot of inexpensive chargers on the market. Uh, you can also get like a maintenance or a trickle charger that you can put on the battery and leave it, and it'll just make sure that that battery doesn't discharge on you when you're not using the sled. Okay, now the ideal for storing your snowmobile is remove the battery during the storage season, uh, you know, wipe it down, clean the terminals, make sure that it's got a good charge in it, and then store it in a cool, dry place. And if you want, again, you could put a maintenance charger on it. Now, in the wintertime, up here, I have too many batteries to store inside, so most of them stay in their machines. What I do, I have a reminder on my iPhone, and I'll actually come out here, I'll throw the charger on the golf cart. It's got a smart charger, so I'll just leave it on overnight. Um, I'll throw the charger on the lawnmower. Uh, the sled, hopefully I got enough snow that I'm out riding and it's getting charged. If it's been sitting for a couple of weeks, I'll throw a charger on that battery and make sure it's topped up. And then with my ATV, I have one of those little maintenance chargers that I leave on it because it doesn't get used quite as much. Now, you might have a battery like this one. This one's out of my lawn tractor. Now, this battery has removable caps, and it's got a couple of lines here that tell me the level of the electrolyte in the battery. With this type of battery, you might have to periodically top up that electrolyte with distilled water. More than likely, the battery in your sled is going to be a sealed, maintenance-free battery where you don't do that, but always follow your manufacturer's recommendations. All right, guys, now, a fully charged 12-volt battery should actually be about 12.8 volts. Um, but there's actually a few other things you need to know. Uh, the main one is cranking amps. So how many amps is it putting out uh, to know really the condition of that battery? Now, I have a couple of different testers that I have and a couple of different chargers uh, I want to show you, but I'm going to do that in my next video, so keep an eye on the channel. Now, I emptied everything out of the two batteries that I showed you in today's video, but if you remember one thing from this video, remember they're called lead-acid batteries because they're full of acid. Acid is highly corrosive. So make sure you're wearing gloves. Make sure you're wearing eye protection. Don't lick it. Don't spill any on yourself and follow the instructions that came with your battery charger. All right, and with that, that's it for me. That's it for this video. If you liked it, if you found it entertaining, if you learned something new, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, take a second and do it. Until next time, I'm David Clark. Thanks for taking the time to watch. When the battery is weak and it's about time... And that's when the battery's been sitting and all of the chemicals in that acid settle out and they end up at the bottom. bottom. Now the other problem that can happen early is a runny nose when you're out in the cold.